Big Sills National Football Show. Welcome aboard. You know, I watched something last night that made me have hope in America. And I think the greatest part of America was on display last night with our first responders. Whether it be 9-11, a roadside crash, or a player laying on a field dying. That was the best of America last night. Those first responders saved that man's life, DeMar Hamlin. Lost consciousness, had a heart attack, and wasn't breathing. Mouth-to-mouth resuscitation was given to a player in Cincinnati, Ohio. There were no teams but one team to save that guy's life. The Bengals, the on-site medical assistants, the Bills, that was tremendous. Watching those people save his life. That's the best of America. It really was. He's in a coma. And I'm not going to sit here for three hours and bang on this topic because we pretty much heard the sports take guys did a great job. Everyone else has put their opinions in. So I'll give you mine at the top of each hour here. But let me get into the league here. Let me ask you guys something. When a fireman goes into a fire and there's a third floor fire, you think he walks into it with no plan? Or how about an overturned car on the side of the highway? Three passengers are pinned. You think those guys don't have a plan with the jaws of life? I keep hearing these inexperienced and incapable people of understanding what it takes to play in that league and that game, you don't get it. How could you not have a contingency plan? Because you don't care. This is uncharted territory. How can it be with the most violent sport in America? How can it be? Well, because the league owners are still in a courtroom battling the players on whether or not CTE is caused by contact in the league. We didn't know what to do. This is uncharted territories. Now, by the way, Troy Vincent has come out and said, we never gave the players five minutes to get back out there. I kind of half believe that. I do. But I think Joe Burrow and Josh Allen and McDermott and Zach Taylor, the head coach of the Bengals, I think those guys all said we're not playing. How do you not have a plan for a man dying on your field? Remember what I told you three weeks ago? Do you remember? Things will not change in that league until someone dies on the field. Boy, did I didn't think it would be this soon that we would be this close. I am very proud of the NFL players and how they rallied around one another, retired and current. It was wonderful to see. If we have any updates, we'll give it to you. Uncharted territory, 100 years of football. And you still don't know what to do with injured players. It wasn't the league that saved the lives. It was the first responders that saved his life. No plan. Of course, there's no plan. There's a plan, though, when you want to suspend players. Or you want to talk about taking knees. And by the way, stop that shit with the vaccinations. You're not going to politicize a guy being almost killed last night on a field here. That's for some other dumbass show. We don't do that. We don't take pandemics and injuries and politicize them to make a political point. Those are for losers. 
vaccination. Guy's breathing on a respirator right now. I don't give a shit about your political views or your political stance or what you think of vaccinations or not. It has no bearing right now. Dude, guy's fighting for his life with his mom holding his hand. Okay. Congratulations to our first responders. Guys are sensational. 